resuming debate, reprise the debat, the Honorable Member for Kitchener Centre. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. It uh, is uh, indeed uh, an honor to rise today to speak in support of Bill S-8, the Safe Drinking Water for First Nations Act. And I'd like to begin by just uh, describing, perhaps for those uh, who haven't yet uh, heard the framework of this, uh, how we arrived at this place tonight uh, in debating this bill. And I'll begin by saying that in Canada, water and wastewater operations and systems are generally the responsibility of the provincial and territorial governments. And over the years, different jurisdictions have developed comprehensive regulatory regimes for the protection of source water, water quality standards, and the oversight of water treatment plants and uh, water delivery services. And uh, over the time that Canada has been growing as a nation, we have in our various communities learned from our mistakes, uh, most uh, tragically in Walkerton, for example, in my own province, uh, and the provinces and territories have developed a, a highly regarded uh, set of regulations across the country which serves uh, the majority of Canadians very well. And of course it guides the infrastructure that is necessary to provide for safe drinking water and water services. However, because Section 91, Paragraph 24 of the Constitution Act of 1867 grants to the federal government exclusive jurisdiction over, quotes, Indians and lands reserved for Indians, provincial regulatory water standards do not apply to on-reserve First Nations communities. Now, to date, there has been no federal legislative framework governing drinking water and wastewater in First Nations communities beyond what is set out uh, in a welter of public uh, federal policies, administrative guidelines, and funding arrangements. And so we have to ask ourselves here tonight, and Canadians across the country should ask, why is that, that after 150 years almost, since Confederation, First Nations are the only Canadians who do not have proper and healthy regulations for drinking water and wastewater. Why is that after 150 years? And uh, I must say that uh, when I speak to my constituents about First Nations issues, I always begin by explaining to them how complex it is, what a lengthy history we have of uh, uh, relationships uh, with our First Nations and what a diversity of views there are. Chief among them has been the constant uh, question of uh, First Nations sovereignty and to what degree can the Government of Canada uh, deal with uh, First Nations uh, on a local basis or a regional or a national basis and uh, who is responsible for what. So that's a problem, determining roles and responsibilities. There are three federal departments involved. I'm just going to mention one of them when it comes to uh, drinking water and wastewater, and that is Aboriginal Affairs and Northern Development Canada, which provides funding, including funds for capital construction, upgrading, and a portion of operating and maintenance costs. Now, how much? Well, 80 percent. 80 percent of First Nations operating and capital costs is paid by Aboriginal Affairs and Northern Development Canada, to First Nations for the provision of water services uh, to their communities. And it also oversees the design, construction, and maintenance of water facilities. First Nations communities, through their chiefs and councils, however, are responsible for the design, construction, operation, and maintenance of water systems. And they assume 20% of the costs. And where has that taken us? Well, uh, reports have been done over the years, uh, but I think at this point uh, it's uh, fairly notorious uh, that uh, wastewater and drinking water conditions on reserves uh, have been in very, very poor shape. 
In fact, there was an inspection uh, done uh, in, I think, 2011 of 587 First Nations communities across the country, 97 percent of all First Nations community communities, and it was found that of the assessed water systems, 39 percent were at high overall risk, 34 percent as medium and 27 percent low overall risk. And at that time it was estimated that uh, the cost to upgrade existing water and wastewater systems to meet federal protocols and guidelines as well as provincial standards and regulations would be $1.8 billion. Now, $1.8 billion. Is it the case that the government of Canada, after all these years, has not been willing to spend the money necessary? No, that's not the case. That's not where the problem lies. In fact, despite uh, the fact that between 2006 and 2014, the, the uh, life of this present government, uh, the, the government will have invested approximately $3 billion to support First Nations communities in managing their water and wastewater infrastructure and related public health activities. Let me repeat that so that listeners at home don't think they misheard. $3 billion in eight years to really do what that report suggested would cost $1.08 billion. But in spite of that, uh, we hear continued calls from the opposition uh, for more funding. Now, uh, I, of course, um, won't uh, pretend to, to know what the value of a billion dollars is. It, it reminds me of, uh, if memory serves me, a, a liberal minister who once, uh, a few years ago, uh, was uh, uh, taken to task uh, for saying, what's a million? Well, today the refrain from across the aisle is, what's a billion? In fact, what's three billion? I have to say that uh, in light of the fact that we've been at this 150 years, and particularly acutely in the last 10 years, and particularly having spent $3 billion in the last uh, seven or eight years alone, and we still have these problems, I think we have to look elsewhere. We have to start elsewhere to solve this problem. So the government uh, has uh, gone at it with a willing heart, and uh, Bill S-8 in the previous uh, sorry, in this parliament, uh, was uh, introduced on uh, the 29th of February 2012 to provide for the development of federal regulations governing the provision of drinking water, water quality standards, and the disposal of wastewater in First Nations communities. And uh, indeed, uh, the bill also establishes that federal regulations may incorporate by reference provincial regulations governing uh, drinking water and wastewater in First Nations communities. Now, the reality is that water is water and uh, health needs are health needs, and we should all, all Canadians, all citizens of this country, including First Nations, should enjoy the benefit of the same minimum standards. There is no reason why those standards cannot apply in First Nations. First Nations, it's true, will be responsible for implementing them, but only responsible for 20 percent of the cost. And the government is more than prepared uh, to come up with the other 80 percent and indeed uh, to uh, oversee and supervise the implementation of these standards. But this isn't the first time, Mr. Speaker. That's what really makes it frustrating. Uh, the member who spoke last talked about a lack of political will. Well, indeed, that's what we're witnessing here tonight if we don't pass this bill, because it's been tried before. Bill S-11 in the previous parliament was introduced in the Senate on May 26, 2010. It was referred to the Senate Standing Committee on Aboriginal Peoples for examination in December of 2010. From February to March, the committee held nine meetings on the proposed legislation and heard witnesses. Ideas were uh, surfaced. Uh, however, unfortunately, thanks again to the opposition and the uh, bringing down of the uh, last parliament and the provoking of, a, of an election, uh, the Bill S-11 died on the order paper when parliament was dissolved on March 26, 2011. 
Now, Bill S-8 does retain uh, several of the features of the former uh, Bill S-11, but there are key differences. And uh, it would be beyond the scope of my time, uh, Mr. Speaker, to go into those, uh, but uh, I just have to say that the delivery of safe drinking water to on-reserve First Nations is critical to the health and safety of the community's residents. Access to safe, clean, potable water is also closely tied to the economic viability of individual communities. And it's up to this Parliament to just take this step. We'll do more. This isn't the end of it. But let's at least get off the ground with this step forward. I urge the members opposite to support this bill. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Camille Vintard Gisnef.